Need something? Sometime after our mission in Tempil, we bumped into the old merchant in Folka. Well, look who the cat dragged in. Thanks for handling things in Tempil. You all deserve the best. Tempil had been roughed up by Furikin's rampage, and all of the locals were busy repairing the damage. The work we did that day had been crucial to those recovery efforts. Out of curiosity, my young lizard friend, were you much help to your crew? Uh-oh! <laughs> He said the L word. I turned to Vern, ready for his usual furious tagline. Thanks, Pops. You really helped me see the light. Huh. <laughs> this was new. The old man threw an apple to Vern and they exchanged a nod. Then, without explaining this bizarre bond between them that just came out of the blue, he left. Um, does anyone else feel like the space time continuum just broke? Eo was staring dumbfounded at the small dragon, who was already happily munching away on a tart Granny Smith. Had he... matured? Enough to ignore his most hated of hated insults? Seriously, this is just too much to believe! He called you a lizard and everything! Maybe the ship will be a little quieter from now on, huh? Hold it! I ain't no lizard! And don't you say that in front of the apple! What if it hears you? <laughs> uh, maybe he'd get there in another adventure or two. get this report turned in much thanks captain paperwork is mm. since the crew started helping id with his job as the new mr fix it we'd been really busy the shop was completely flooded with requests those sad days when the islanders didn't trust id they seemed like a lie now lyria how are you feeling today Id asked me that every time we met we're all worried about you. How's the lifelink holding up? Right. Our lifelink. Everyone thought it might have weakened when I was absorbed by Angra Mainyu. Honestly, I had been really scared back then. But now, with the weight of the sky off our shoulders, I felt better than ever. I flashed Vern and Id a smile to let them know I was okay. Talking about the lifelink brought back memories, and I realized... It still knew almost nothing about our adventures. I began by explaining Catalina's daring rescue of me and our escape from the Earth Day Empire. Then I described the big trees of Zinkenstil and the Imperial Hydra, and the sad reason I needed to make the lifelink with the captain. Eventually, we met Rackham and Eo, Rosetta and Eugen, and before we knew it, our ship was full. <sighs> It's really amazing how much our family has grown. The whole time I'd sat there, in silence, yes, but I could tell he was giving me 110% of his attention. Since getting to Zega Grande, we've had a heck of a wild ride. But now that things have calmed down, we can get to making some good memories. Sure. I think I'm starting to understand it. Sure, he has two modes, Cold and colder. But if you really pay attention, you can see he has a warm enough heart. Id, the captain, the crew, you're the best friends I could ever ask for. Here's to hoping we'll be together forever.
After some exciting paperwork, I returned to find Lyria and Vern taking Id on a walk down memory lane. You guys have seen some amazing things. <laughs> this was coming from someone who survived Lilith's schemes and won a mind battle with a god dragon. <sighs> I guess game recognizes game. It's all because the captain looked out for us. Yep, my butt is epic. You saw him save Lyria in this whole freaking Skydome? I turned to look at Vern, open-mouthed. Where was all this coming from? I'm just trying to be vocal about my appreciation, remember? So yeah, take care of Lyria and keep up the good work. <laughs> I could certainly manage that. Oh, just remembered, Sierra got us a whole bag of sweets as thanks for all our hard work. Lyria and Vern exchanged a glance so charged, I thought the air between them was going to burst into flames. You should have told us that first! Early Dragon gets the grub! Hey, no fair! Come on, Vern! Way! And just like that, they were off. Uh, booties, right? Captain, you got a moment? I turned around, about to ask, you want some too? But one look at Id's knitted brow, and the question died on my lips. Let's duel. Uh, did I just hear that right? Why, though? Did he have something against cookies? Sorry. It was the stories about your adventures. They put the thought into my head. Oh, that's why. <laughs> uh, nah, I still got nothing. I want to protect Lyria. Just as much as you do. He stalked away then, and left me staring after him. I was still having trouble piecing together his train of thought. But one thing was clear. He was doing it for Lyria's sake. The duel was to take place at Hailwind Altar. Lots of memories there. It's where we first met Id. Where I lost to him. And Lyria was taken from us. Do you guys really have to do this? We're friends now, right? Friends don't fight each other. Lyria and Vern tried to talk me out of it the whole way there. But I just kept thinking of the look in Id's eye. He wasn't going to back down. And I respected that. Captain. Id had been staring into the distance, like a statue set to guard the altar. He turned when he heard our footsteps. Now that we've gotten to know one another, I've come to realize something. There's no one that can keep Lyria safe better than you. He took deliberate steps towards me, but this was nothing like the first time we met. He'd been terrifying then, like a hydra closing in on its prey. But now, there was something softer about the light in his eyes. You could tell he was there to help. You're the real thing. A hero. You didn't just save Lyria, you saved the skies. And I thought, maybe if we cross blades again, I'd learn something. Something that would help me be... more like you. Id... I finally got it. Id and I... And there was still a part of us that couldn't tear away from that fateful day at Hailwind Altar. When Id had been a bad guy, and I'd been too weak to protect Lyria. But, things were different now. And this fight was going to prove it. I'm not losing this time. <laughs> I'd be disappointed if you did. I drew my sword and took the first step forward. Oh. 
zombies. Give me everything you've got. Okay. Great back at you. Please, just promise me you two will be careful. Watch out!
Thank you, Captain. <sighs> no. Thank you. <sighs> I won. I stood, almost doubled over with my hands on my knees, trying to remember how to breathe. Id staggered over and stuck a clenched hand in my face. <laughs> yeah, of course he'd go for a fist bump. I tapped his knuckles lightly with mine, and just like that, we were back to being loyal crewmates. That duel had blown away all our regrets. No more looking over our shoulders. It was time to move past... well... Our past. Hey, heard about your little spat with Id. Wish I still had that kind of energy. <laughs> Oigen gave me a hearty slap between the shoulder blades. The chills I got when watching them. Man, they were going all out. Uh, of course Vern had told everybody. I could appreciate honesty and openness throughout the crew, but I clearly needed to have a talk with that dragon about minding his own business. So you're jealous Lyria's making new friends. What, do you have a crush or something? Yo, don't be silly. That's not what this was about at all. As Lyria tried to explain the situation, I stood there with a smirk. <laughs> She's cute when she's flustered. Oh, it had been a wild ride, but things were finally back to normal. I couldn't get the duel with Id out of my mind. He had been a perfect storm placing his whole heart behind every blow. I had to remember what I was fighting for to even stand a chance. To be honest, I still don't think I'm stronger than him. I won this battle, yeah, but both of us are still changing, still growing. Who knows how it'll turn out if there's a next time. But I doubt we'll ever need to fight like that again. Id trusts me now. I can feel that just as much as I felt the shock of his sword clashing against mine. Trust is nice, but it always comes with responsibility. Still, that's the weight I signed up to carry when I became the captain of the Grand Cipher and took Lyria's hand all that time ago. We really don't get a break. For sure. It felt like everybody in Zega Grande had a job for Mr. Fixit. Today's request? Just taking down a monster that can demolish a small village with a sneeze? <laughs> uh, no biggie. Vern, could you get us some potions? You betcha! Liquid help coming right up! Lyria, we're about to head out. Mind letting the rest of the crew know? Sure, no problem. I took a deep breath, letting it settle in my chest before releasing. We had a game plan, of course, but you never know how these things will go. Timing, coordination, everything had to be perfect. You'll be fine. I trust you, and so does everyone else. Id put a hand on my shoulder, and somehow, that weight steadied me. We'd figure things out. We always did. I exchanged a nod with him, and we headed for the docks. 
The rest of the crew was already there, waving their arms in the air. From the smiles on their faces, you'd think we were going for a tropical vacation in a goose day. Well, either way, I was sure we'd all come out of it in one piece. We had a bright future ahead of us. Well then, so... Some time after the commotion at Tempil, life in Fulka began to struggle towards normalcy. The breeze was soft and welcoming. I'd been blind to the city's charms before, focused as I was on rescuing Lyria from the Church of Avia. The sun watched over the victims of Furikin's rage as they raised new homes for themselves from the rubble. But once scars have set in, they are slow to fade. Here and there, the children of Tempil labored with tools too large for their hands. I offered my aid, but the children said their work was their responsibility. As long as you're sure you'll be okay. Some distance away, a small boy burst into a red-faced fit. Lyria and I rushed over, hoping to be of help.
Don't try and stop me. I have to do this! He hurled his words like stones as he whipped into a run. Concerned, I asked a nearby man about the boy. He explained that the boy's sister was ill, and the lad was after the remedy, an herb called Windcrest. The sickness was assumed to have died out hundreds of years ago, but had now returned to torment the child. And if that's not enough, I heard the woods where Windcrest grows have turned into a monster den. The boy had struck out alone. Folka had no soldiers to spare, for they were all dispatched to Tempeel for the reconstruction effort. No one was left to answer his pleas, but I would. In my heart, I vowed to bring back the child, and if possible, the herb too. I prayed only that I wasn't too late. I'll take point. Well, according to that old villager, this is the place we want to be. Perfect. Keep your eyes peeled for Windcrest. Earth spirits. Strange. We didn't see any the last time we were here. Seems like they're attracted to the wind. No! Maybe they can feel Let's its come. power. Nave. Stay alert! What a green tooth! It's over! I see through you! Forward! Stand and face me! Good work. You as well. Frozen Blade! Some comrades are. Cut them down. You have my blade yeah, whenever you hear that, Fuji. You're such a good boy. I need your power. It's on me. Hurt. I've got you. How's this? Excellent, Excellent collaboration. I must agree. You yeah. deserve the credit. I guess you're right. Yeah, that should be more than enough. But we still haven't located the boy. What? Where is that coming from? I don't know. But it can't be a good sign. We better hurry. A golem. So that's what was behind the tremors. Crap, it spotted us. Get ready for a fight. Very well. Healing life. No time. <laughs> Get back! To the fire! They're open! Destroy Say them! Say goodnight! Keep it up, crew! We can handle Who that. Who do you think you're commanding? Was you were heard Hurricane's voice just now. I think that when Hurricane covered this archipelago in storm, some of its power fused with the land. And the monster. Right. What? What? Fighting cold! This is our fight! No escape! Succumb to fear. Out of practice? Man, can I get some of that hurricane juice too? This golem is off! We 
can't afford to let it run free. Not while that boy remains missing. Into the fray! I've got you! Well done, fairy! You were amazing as well, Kelly. Those code! Thank you. Keep your eyes trained on the enemy. I'll find a safe spot and support from afar. And... Recognize that voice. With a final death knell, the golem stilled. The boy crawled out from the tall grass, and I pressed the wind crest into his trembling hand. Wow! Now I can save my sister! You're the best, lady! He smiled at me, and with a great burden lifted from his shoulders, skipped the whole way back to Folka. As I watched his happy shuffle, I wished more joy and color into his life of toil, which had been covered by the dust of destruction. We made medicine from the Windcrest you picked. The doctor said Hazel looks better every day. This morning, she was able to get out of bed and do some drawing. She loves drawing pictures. Thanks again, Catalina. From Al. And Hazel. P.S. Please visit Foca when you have a chance. Another letter from Al arrived. Hazel had fully recovered and was bouncing about with unbridled energy. Al had returned to work on the reconstruction site and was working twice as hard to make up for lost time. Uh, is it just me, or is his writing messier? It wasn't just Vern. Not only were there more missing words and misspellings than usual, the lines of Al's letters were harsh and tangled. Evidently, he'd scrawled them in a great hurry between jobs. I got a bad feeling that next up, it's gonna be Al himself stuck in bed. I shared Vern's sentiment. This was a boy willing to pick herbs from death's very garden for his sister. There was not an ounce of self-restraint in his character. I could only hope that he would emerge from this trial unscathed. Reading Al's third letter made my head buzz and my hands go numb. Help! Hazel got sick again. Doctor says he don't know what's happened. The medicine we made don't work no more. What do we do? It struck me that I, a Skyfarer they had only met once, was all the help these children had left to turn to. Adelina, I'm worried about Hazel. Lyria, who had been reading over my shoulder, looked as pale as death, and I thought I heard the fierce thudding of her heart. Let's head back to Folka, quickly. We learned not long afterwards that the captain, who at times seemed to command a sixth sense, had already asked Rackham to set course for the city. Al, Hazel, don't lose hope. Help is on the way.
for the skies and her people. You wouldn't leave your sister behind. When we arrived at Folka, Al came out to greet us. I noticed he wouldn't meet any of our eyes and ducked his head like he was hiding from the world. The doctor had examined Hazel from head to toe, but as far as his eyes could tell, there was nothing wrong with her. Hazel says all she needs to get better is some wraith ring eggs, but I... I just don't know. Al's voice was so small, I could hear the distance between us. Not physical, but emotional. He explained reluctantly that the Wraithwing was a bird which lives among the ancient ruins of Dolly Island. Actually, forget it. We've made you guys do too much already. We'll figure something out. His smile didn't quite reach his eyes, which were enclosed in dark circles. The reconstruction effort must have been hounding him. And he was apparently not its only victim. Hazel had fallen ill around when Al began overexerting himself. I think I see what's going on here. Gently pushing aside Al's objections, we left to search for a wraithwing nest. The task ahead, though dangerous, was for brother as much as it was for sister. Leave the front line to me. This area seems promising. Be on the lookout for tracks. Hmm? This is quite a rare find. We'd better add it to our provisions. It may come in useful later. Large talon marks and scattered feathers. The culprit is probably a wraithwing. Let's see if it's left any other tracks. the description perfectly. That's our Wraithwing. Ah! What's with all the party crashers? Stay calm. I'll get us out of this. Never enough! Let us take them! Let's hide us! One no escape! It's over! On me! Understood. Not on my head! You have a gift. If you say so. Keep your cool, everyone! Thanks. Don't quit! You ready, Cat? 
always. I'll freeze them in their tracks. Another chance. Right away. Sure. <laughs> Stay alert. Understood. Right. Nice. Of course. Can't lose focus. <laughs> no more. They're open. They're finished. I'm right behind you. Excellent work matching my flow. It came naturally. Our swordplay is so simple. Such strength. Now, make a fall. You have my ear. Keep focused. Of course. Very well. Get them, Aries. Heal! You have my gratitude. Look! The bird! It's watching us really closely. Whoa! Looks like it's got giant talons and a nasty temper. Be careful, Catalina! It's all right, Vern. I won't let that overgrown turkey hurt us. Let's go. Don't get carried away. Into my trap! Nothing to fear. Huh? Where are you going? There's still goons to bash.
get carried away. There's nothing to fear. Obliged. Get carried away. collect the eggs. I can't help feeling guilty, though. We're so sorry, Miss Braithwing. We promise we won't take more than we need. <laughs> A fine victory! I took our prize to the dining hall. But weighing on me was the thought that Hazel had likely told Al a white lie. It said that one bite of a Wraithwing egg sends waves of energy coursing through your body. I guess that she wanted the meal not for herself, but for her exhausted brother. I'm so sorry. My suspicions were confirmed when I returned from the canteen to find Hazel apologizing to the crew. Uh, Catalina? We need to tell you something. I cut Al off. I knew speaking the words would hurt him. It was better that he didn't give sound and substance to unnecessary guilt. I don't know what's troubling you, but you have to eat. It's the only way the two of you will get better. Food and comfort. That was all I could afford them.
good day. Back at the dining hall, plates of wraithwing egg omelette were lined up on a table, wafting forth irresistible aroma. Is that really for us? At my nod, Al dug in. Ow! Oh, burnt my tongue. But, mmm, so good! I love it! Muffled voices caught my attention, and I looked out the window to see a gathering crowd. Though I had only collected a basket of the famed eggs, it seemed that was enough to feed the whole city. Hey, Al. Heard from your sister. Sorry, I should have noticed you were working yourself to the bone. A man who seemed to be in charge of reconstruction efforts came to our table. Gently, he explained that he had only now been made aware of Al's failing health. He vowed to encourage the workers to rest, so no one would overexert themselves ever again. Uh, Al, you okay, bud? You don't look so good. Vern, who had been flitting carefree through the air, came to a sudden stop. I smiled at his concern, which was well-meaning, but misplaced. Al was going to be fine now. It was time for a celebration, and I had the perfect surprise planned. <laughs> Their reactions are going to be priceless. A light dessert is the perfect way to top off a hearty meal. Stealing my way into the kitchen, I cooked up an original dish using spare ingredients and imagination. When I unveiled my creation, the crew gulped in what I assume was anticipation. The people of Folka, however, were more vocal with their excitement. You're saying that the very hand that defeated the Wraithwing made this dessert? Is there anything she can't do? It was enough to make me blush. But, if I may be so bold, I don't think their praise was unearned. My dish was wholly unique in its shape, color, and smell. Catalina, this is amazing! I've never tasted anything like it before! Encouraged by Lyria, every last diner snatched up their spoons. Hungrily, they lifted a bite to their lips. And the moment right after, as if someone had captured the scene in a painting, they all froze. There are times when people are so filled to the brim with emotion, not even the smallest physical movement is possible. For the diners, this was apparently one of those times. It seems I'm not such a bad chef after all. Take that, naysayers. Please come again.
good day. Well then, so long. What are you waiting for? Your wish is my command. Um. Hello. Which will it be? What do you say? Will you accept it? Best of luck. Leave it to me. Not bad, is it? You can expect only the best. What do you have on you? Come again. <laughs> I can't wait to debut this. Keep up. I'll end this in There's enemies on the way. We can't let them trash the hallowed ground. Stabby <laughs> alert. Ah, it's yeah. no time. I'll come you. But you know. Ain't done. Goodbye now. Back off. There now. Oh, I got the ammo to Let's run. Fire in the hole! 
Never enough! There! Break it, Lay! I'm not liking the look of this! But don't let it intimidate ya! Rage bandits are the worst! Yeah! Little present for ya! Right away. No problem. Don't let your guard down. Gotcha. Right. What do you think? Come and get. Don't think so. Want a treat? Here, can't keep up. Yep. Bring out the big guns. How many of them are there? Don't let them swarm you. You want oh, more? I got the ammo Don't. Don't underestimate. Thanks. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. No falling on the yeah. well, Someone oh. stop them! Oh. 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 Find Coward. Coward. Shall we? That'll teach them. Yeah. I guess you know no mercy. Let's break you in. Watch out for the shooters! Want a trip? Have a whole night out here. Never enough! Oh. 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 what do you think? Oh. Two roses yeah. shall protect you. Watch out for the shooter! I still got you. fight in me. Hold on, I'm coming. Always double tap. Now's our chance. Gotta. You take Wanna the lead. Yep. Well, I'll be. Best in the business. Watch out for the shooter! Come, come, come. Looks like I got the ammo to spare. Yeah. Now's our chance. This it's still time. Oh. Damn. Mind me not to piss you off. No. What Four. do you mean? Oh, that was me being nice. Done. Get 
Don't let it intimidate you. Time for you to go. They're wide open. I'm on it. Bury them. Thanks, crew. Lovely sentiment. The next will be even better. Here we go. Don't let it intimidate you. Time for you to go. You got it. Don't underestimate. This is gonna burn. Got nothing on you. My, my. Well, now.
My, my. Yep, let's move out. It is an honor. I'll look after you. details be on your way leave it to the captain Understood. Then. You got it. Come now this is better. Now then. Coming again. Goodbye. After me. Let's go. Nice shot. 
Great work, everyone. We got him. I said it better myself. There goes. Blast them full of holes. Piercing punches. Good single muscle.
Ah. This should prove useful. Excellent. I can feel the difference. Exhilarating. For the skies and her people. Is this a drill? Have a good day. What's you in the market for? Want to exchange your Dahlia badges for special treasure? On your way. Come on, people! Get your keisters in gear! All right! We've just gotta grab what the client asked for! Gunpowder in the morning. Stay. 
Say sir like that. We're not in a rush yet, but I'm sure our client wouldn't mind a little hustle. Huh. Buddy, the client's expecting us back soon, so we've got to hurry. Time. You trying to milk every second? Let's bring the pain. Good day. How many times do I gotta say it? Getting parts to fix the Nautilus out here in the boonies is next to impossible. I've never been good with women. My words never come out quite the way I mean for them to. I thought maybe Miss Mechanic would be on board, but... Ah, I probably shouldn't be doing this behind Kent's back anyway. I'm telling you, I've tried everything. Sure, I'd love to see her fly again, but it's time to... Get real. Right? Hey, come on. I was against the rules. 
How was I supposed to keep a stern attitude against that blubbering mess? When I finally got a word in edgewise, I let her know I already had the part she needed. Picked him up here and there, across Fanta Grande and Nala Grande. Here, this what you need? I'll cut you a deal. Wait, how? Where in the skies did you find these? Caught up in her excitement, she leapt at me. Whoa, not so close, Missy. Of course, she paid me no regard. It was the parts she had her eyes on. Some modifications here and there, I could... Yeah, can't believe it! The dream is alive! Yep, the dream was alive. She didn't have to say it, the look on her face was enough. All that hubbub from earlier was nowhere to be found. After forking over the payment, she happily took the spare parts off my hands. She also made sure to plant a big fat kiss on my cheek before scurrying off. Jeez, at least warn a guy beforehand, right? Women, I swear. In any case, the winds were starting to blow back in their favor. Rackham, there you are. I've got huge news. Listen to this. It was clear from Kent's smile that the repairs on the Nautilus were going smoothly, thanks to a mechanic friend of his. Well, ain't that something? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't impressed. Those parts weren't the easiest to work with. Not bad, Miss Mechanic. Um, Rackham, sir? My friend told me she got the parts from a traveling skyfarer. Had three-day-old scruff and a little swagger to him. Wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Huh. Well, I keep my scruff in an elegant chin strap. Thank you very much. Not sure I sounded very convincing trying to play off his answer, but I'm a helmsman, not an actor. Ha! Huh. But just another performance or two, and the Nautilus would be skybound once more. The Nautilus is... Skyworthy? I wasn't sure which was greater. The helmsman's confusion or Kent's enthusiasm. Yep. We've got one last bit of patching up to do, but she'll be ready before you know it. Isn't that exciting? Unexpectedly, the helmsman's confusion shifted into something darker. I decided to pry. Yeah, we'll have you back at the helm in no time. Unless you're getting cold feet or something. Yep. Hit the nail on the head, the look in his eyes was unmistakable. He feared the skies. Despite his attempts to hide it, his fists were balled up and trembling. I knew the signs well enough. It wasn't my place to snoop further. From his perspective, I was just a busybody trying to dredge up a dream he'd long laid to rest. What could I do anyway? This was something he had to deal with himself. But hey, if I got through it, anyone could. So I did what I could. I put my hand on his shoulder and gave him a sympathetic nod. I'm sorry, I, I don't think I can do this. It was a bombshell no one wanted to hear, especially as the Nautilus's repairs were finally wrapping up. What are you talking about? This was our dream, wasn't it? What did you... I'm afraid, okay? A heavy silence permeated the room. It was uncanny how much of my former self I saw in him. Actually, uncanny's not the word. It was downright painful. 
See, to pilot an airship, you got to make peace with the fear of flying, a close cousin of the fear of death. You? Afraid? Aren't you a trained helmsman? I knew exactly how he felt, but decided to play dumb. His response was so faint, I wasn't sure if he'd said anything at all. Turns out, he made a bad call during a practice flight and crashed his vessel. Barely escaped with his life. I don't want this dream to die, but my arms shake whenever I think of taking the wheel again. Poor kid, he hadn't figured it out yet, but I knew how to teach him. Real shame the Nautilus won't have a helmsman. Maybe I should take over, till you're feeling up to it. No. The Nautilus... The Nautilus is our ship. He took the bait. Fair enough. Then come with me for a ride on the Grand Cipher. If you've got the grit for it, I mean. It was a risky gamble, but I had a feeling Lady Luck was on my side that day. Damn. Can't we take some R&R &R instead? Incredible. It even has an autopilot mode? <laughs> She's got it all, kid. Why did Rackham bring us aboard? I'm not quite sure myself, actually. But it is kind of fun. Rackham! We've got company! No, no, no! I'm too young to die! Everybody take cover. I'll handle this. Stay calm. I won't let you get in harm's way. I promise. Two, always expect the unexpected, because in the skies, life and death lie cheek by jowl. Expect the unexpected. unexpected. Fire in the hole! Very Your death pleasure! Wish I had me some of that primal power. Grass is always green. I can't aim a firearm to save my life. <laughs> Holy! Healthy as a Shall we? Eat less! Would love to! Keep your wings about you. It's time. Right. Focus of up. Got a bullet yeah. for you. Bring it. Go, <laughs> To victory. Yeah, I know. Here we are. No one compares to our combined we got the That one got me revved up. It yeah. was a marvel. It's go time. I can't believe he took down those wyverns. Skyfarers are a whole different breed, huh? Horde was just recon, huh? Bring it. They'll go down all the same. I think I'm starting to get it, Rackham. Why it is that you fight. I mean, you want to take to the skies? You've got to be ready for the storms, right? Yeah. When you truly believe in a dream, the risk of danger is a small price to pay. A dream, huh? I let fear get the best of me, and I guess I lost sight of what's important. Such to be you! Fire in the hole! Oh. Thanks a bunch. Now we're cooking. Oh, I got the ammo to spare. Follow me. Let's do it. Read it away. The old dog's got fight. Right? Ah, Trigger for this now. Attention. It's go time. What do you Come think? on! Up. Come on! Yeah. Stay alert, folks! All right, that's the last one. Now then, take a good look around you. Tell me that ain't a sky worth putting your life on the line for. Yeah, that's really something, huh? I never knew it could be this beautiful. Ha! 
Not too bad. Not too bad. Incredible! The skies are so vast! Wow! So that's what the town looks like from up high. What a relief! I was worried the monster attack had only made things worse for the would-be crew. But the gamble paid off. The helmsman's eyes lit up with newfound determination. The Nautilus will fly. And you can bet I'll be at the helm. The skies have a way of making us understand. I'm just glad this kid decided to listen. Clear blue skies, gentle breeze, it was perfect conditions for the Nautilus's maiden voyage. As the helmsman gripped the wheel, I knew he was no longer shackled by fear. Kent, the mechanic, the merchant, even Lyria, Vern, and some of our other crewmates, actually damn near the whole town showed up to witness the rebirth of an old friend. As the propellers began to churn, a metallic sputter sounded from somewhere below deck. It was a symphony of gears I'd heard time and time again. That mechanic, she'd done it. After a brief checkup, they started the countdown. The tension was palpable. Come on, Nautilus. All eyes were on the airship. No one dared to breathe. A wind whipped up around the Nautilus, and there it was. Liftoff. And once again, she sailed into those skies so blue. A few weeks had passed since the Nautilus took its maiden voyage. According to Kent, the Nautilus was now Folka's leading cargo ship. Makes sense, given that it was three times faster than any other ship on the island. And not only that, but it seemed Kent had found himself a new dream already. Okay, picture this, Rackham. Three ships conjoined into one massive cruise liner. See, all we need to do is reconstruct these columns here and... <laughs> I wonder if I sounded that crazy to the others whenever I got my big ideas. Anyway, such a massive ship would require at least three helmsmen. So in his effort to make the cruise liner a reality, Kent started studying how to be a helmsman himself. But if Kent were to be the second pilot, who would be the third? About that, actually... We'd be honored to have you as the lead helmsman of our ship. Uh, of course. It was a kind offer, but I already had a family in my crew and a home in the Grand Cipher. But that didn't mean I couldn't let the kid down easy. Sorry, Kent. This Skyfarer is not old enough to set anchor just yet. Until that day comes, you can find me wherever the wind blows. Please come again. Good day. While 
out running errands in Folco one day, I came across a crowd of people in the town square. But from the sounds of things, it wasn't a friendly get-together. I hate you all! Mom, Dad, everybody in this stupid town! The boy shouted angrily at the adults and took off running, right into me! And we both landed on our backsides. Sheesh! Watch where you're going, kid! And that's when I noticed the tears streaming down his face. He was clearly upset about something. Hey, you okay? The boy hopped to his feet without a word, shooting me a glare before sprinting away. One of the adults started to follow after him, but... Please, Doctor, there's not much time. The crowd stopped him in his tracks. But I can't just... No, you're right. My patients need me. Forgive me, Lev. The man closed his eyes, muttered something to the townspeople, and ran off in the opposite direction. Wait, that kid was crying! You're not gonna go after him? I shouted after the man's back, but he either didn't hear me, or pretended not to. Then I felt a gentle hand on my shoulder. I'm sure he wants to, sweetheart. You see, that boy is his son. The boy's name was Lev. His father was a doctor, with many patients needing urgent care. So he had no choice but to ask the townspeople to find a son for him. I knew I should mind my own business, but I couldn't get the poor kid's face out of my head. He was probably hiding somewhere all by himself, crying his eyes out. I understood all too well how painful it felt to be alone. When Master Tsaka reached out to me, it changed my life forever. Maybe it was my turn to do the same for someone else. I turned to ask the crew if we could join the search, but they were already gearing up to head after him. It seemed we'd all had the same idea. Just you wait, Lev, I thought to myself. I was gonna find him and put a smile back on his face, even if it meant sticking my nose where it didn't belong. The villagers didn't seem too worried about Lev. According to them, he'd have to venture much deeper into the forest before encountering any monsters. But that wasn't the issue. It seemed like nobody wanted to talk about why he'd run off in the first place. It was an obvious cry for help, and nobody was helping! I went through the same thing back in the day. Even after I met my master, there were times when the loss of my parents was just too much to bear. I didn't go so far as to run from home, but I'd sit alone in the corner of my room, hugging my knees to my chest and crying. Whenever Master Zaka found me like that, he'd always perform a silly magic trick to cheer me up. Just like me, all Lev wanted was for someone to find him, to take his hand, so he went off on his own in the hopes that someone would come for him. I'm sure he knew it was selfish, but it was the only card he felt he had left. Do you think this means Lev doesn't want to live at home anymore? I had a feeling that wasn't the case. He's probably just going through a rebellious phase. Oh, that's when kids start arguing and acting out, right? Catalina told me it's pretty common. Did you have a phase like that? Lyria's question was innocent enough, but I was too embarrassed to admit that I'd ever got off alone because I wanted someone to pay attention to me. Heck no! That's not something befitting of a grown lady like myself. So what if I told a little lie? Our biggest concern right now was Lev, who was out there, probably crying with his back up against some rough, silent tree. 
He needed a friend, and I was more than determined to be one for him. forest is as huge as ever. I sure hope Lev's okay. Come on! We gotta find him! It's fast! Right? What are goblins doing here? There's no time to waste. We've got to find him. We were lucky we found Lev when we did, or he would have been Monster Chow. But before we could talk to him, the town watch came hurrying over. Lev, your parents are worried sick about you. Come on, let's go home. Lev looked away, ignoring the old man's outstretched hand. I could imagine how he was feeling, being treated like he was selfish and immature, when all he wanted was someone to sit down and talk to. The man sighed and scratched his head in frustration. Your mom and dad are fine people. Try being a little more considerate, okay? Lev immediately bristled at those words, breaking his silence. What do you know? This is all your fault! Knocking the man's hand out of the way, he turned and ran deeper into the forest. It was like watching a scene from my own past, but I wished he'd get a grip already. The deeper he went into the forest, the more likely he was to get attacked. We had to hurry. Hello.
We all split up to search for Lev so we could cover more ground. I didn't see any trace of him at first, so I thought I must have gone the wrong way. But then I noticed footprints that looked like someone had slipped over a nearby ledge. And sure enough, when I peeked down, I saw a familiar figure sitting hunched over, knees to his chest. He looked a little scraped up, but didn't seem to be hurt badly. I was just glad I managed to find him still in one piece. <laughs> when I told him I was a Skyfarer, he immediately burst into tears of relief. I could tell he was upset with the villagers about something, and that's why he couldn't be honest with them. But as an outsider, I thought I might have a chance. Watch closely. I'm gonna cast some special magic just for you. It was time for one of my master's patented magic tricks. I showed Lev my empty palm before covering it with a handkerchief. I flung the cloth away, and voila! There was a piece of candy in my hand. Wow, candy! Here, you can have it. After devouring the candy, he finally calmed down. Thanks. Normally, that would have been enough to lift any kid's spirits. But his face fell again as quickly as it had lit up. I guess he really doesn't want to go home. I decided I wouldn't leave him until there was a smile back on his face. While we were still deep in the woods, I decided to ask Lev up front. Why did you run away? He hesitated at first, but after seeing that I was serious, he started to open up. My mom and dad used to work as doctors in Tempeel. Back then, all had been well with their family. But when Furikin went berserk, they lost their home and ended up moving to Folka. And that was when things started to fall apart. His parents began to spend all of their time tending to patients who were affected by the disaster with hardly a moment's rest. Lev watched as his mom got paler and the black circles under her eyes grew darker and darker. He begged her to take a break, but it was no use. Eventually, she collapsed from overwork. I told her she wouldn't be able to help people anymore if she got sick. She just wouldn't listen to me. And here I thought he was just a kid going through a rebellious phase. That wasn't the case at all. That's really grown up of you, Lev. You're just worried about your mom and dad, huh? Yeah. After hearing Lev's explanation, I finally understood how he felt. I knew how hard it was watching people you cared about pushing themselves too hard. I couldn't stand to see my master doing it either. And that's exactly what was going through Lev's mind. He wasn't being selfish. Everything he did, it was because he loved his parents. If it were me in his shoes, I'm sure I'd be worried sick about my parents too. There's nothing wrong with worrying about your parents. I'm sure they're proud to have a son who cares so much. But... But what? Something was still on his mind. I always wanted to be a great doctor, just like my mom and dad. But after my mom collapsed, I started thinking maybe everybody else was just using them. Along the way, he'd stop being able to trust the people of Folka. And he thought feeling that way meant he could never follow in his parents' footsteps. Lev stared at the ground as he spoke, finally confiding his troubles to me. After hearing his story, I began to open up about my own parents. He listened to my words in silence. My parents had also strained themselves too hard after getting sick, and eventually passed away. 
Solev's circumstances were all too familiar. Just like him, I felt nothing but bitterness and despair. There was one difference. I've got to admit, I envy you a little. After all, your mom and dad are still alive and well. <sighs> While we were standing there talking, Lev's parents and the villagers were probably beside themselves with worry, braving the dangers of the forest to search for him. When I told him that, Lev finally seemed to grasp the situation. I really messed up, didn't I? I'm sorry. Are you sure I'm the person you should be saying that to? I stood up and smiled at Lev. He and his family all seemed like really good people. The only thing they needed to patch their home back together was a long heart to heart. As we made our way back to town, Lev still seemed anxious. Don't start freaking out yet. First you need to apologize to your parents. Then you can tell them everything you told me. Well, how am I supposed to say it, though? Talk about helpless. Lucky for him, he had a grown-up lady around to nudge him in the right direction. How about I teach you that special magic I showed you earlier? But that wasn't real magic, right? It was just some cheap trick. Uh, rude. It was good enough to make you stop blubbering, wasn't it? Come on, let me see your hand. The trick I showed him could be used without any special training. It was the magic designed to bring smiles that my master had taught me. Lev watched me closely, then tried his best to copy what I did. He practiced over and over and over. After walking through the forest for a while, we heard the voices of Lev's parents and the other villagers. Lev? Answer if you can hear me! Where are you, Lev? Mom! Dad! As soon as Lev heard his parents' voices, he broke into a run. At that moment, the villagers' shouts echoed through the nearby woods. Look out! An enormous figure was approaching, knocking down trees as it lumbered toward us. It couldn't be... a goblin? Intruders, die! It all happened so quickly. The goblin lunged to attack Lev's parents. You're gonna have to go through us first. Huh? Lev was speechless. It seemed as if the entire town of Folka had stepped up to protect his parents from the monster. <laughs> Puny weaklings. What I did next was purely out of instinct. Freeze! A block of ice appeared out of thin air, slamming into the goblin's head. Tasty meat. You first. The spell had done its job. I'd gotten the goblin's attention. I finally made a breakthrough with Lev. I wasn't gonna let Monster Breath over here ruin their happy reunion. Bring it on! I've got a spell with your name on it! I wish there was something we could do to help her. I'll try mixing up a potion. That should do the trick.
more of them. What do we do now? Stand back, everyone. I can handle this by myself. One more.
think she might actually do this. There's more where that came from.
can't believe it. She took it down all by herself. First you saved Tempeel, and now us. Thank you, Skyfarer. The people of Volca were all safe, including Lev's parents. After thanking me, Lev turned to the villagers, shuffling his feet nervously. I'm really sorry, everybody. Thanks for protecting my mom and dad. Come now, there's no need for that. We're the ones who ought to be thanking your folks. They've done so much for us. Sorry for everything we've put your family through. Lev and I shared a glance before he turned to his parents, finally telling them everything he'd been bottling up inside. His parents and the people of Volca listened intently, nodding every so often at his words. You only ever had everyone's best intentions at heart, didn't you? We're so sorry for making you worry. I chalked it all up to selfishness and immaturity, but should have heard you out. I hope you can forgive your old man. I was just glad everything had turned out all right in the end. Eel! We're here to help! Sorry, we were clear on the other side of the woods. What happened to that giant monster? What the heck? You're the one who said heroes always arrive just in the nick of time. But what kind of hero arrives after the fight's already over? What does that matter right now? Here, let me take a look at you. You're not hurt or anything, are you? <laughs> you have no idea how much I wanted to tease Rackham for losing his cool. But I held it in. It's really nice knowing you have people who care. Good day. The day had arrived for Lev to show his parents the magic trick he'd learned from me. Was he going to be able to pull it off? I had to see for myself, so I followed them to a restaurant in town and sat at a nearby table. Somehow just watching was enough to make me nervous too. Um, I want to show you something. Come on, you can do this. It's all about sleight of hand, remember? Lev showed his parents the palm of his empty hand and covered it with a handkerchief. Then he removed the cloth just like I taught him. But when he opened his hand, there was nothing there. I thought he must have made a mistake, but it turned out I was wrong. I learned this trick so I could make others smile. You're actually supposed to have a present in your hand when you open it, but I couldn't think of what to give you. Unable to hold in the tears any longer, Lev started to cry. You both have done so much for me. I just couldn't find anything good enough. He wiped away his tears with the back of his hand, his voice quavering slightly as he fought to get the words out. I'm really sorry for running off and scaring you guys. But I was worried, because you're always so busy. It hurt when you wouldn't listen to me, and... I've been so lonely. Tried not to let it get to me, but it just ended up being too much. We're sorry too, Lev. But don't worry. Soon we won't be as swamped anymore. There's supposed to be a big group moving to Folka from Seed Hollow soon. I hear at least one of them's a doctor. Once things have settled down, we'll all spend some quality time together. I'd love to go shopping in Seed Hollow as a family. That sort of thing. You'd like that too, right, dear? Uh, of course. As long as we decide on a budget beforehand. Way to go, Lev! Seeing them all smiling together like that reminded me of Master Sokka for some reason. Once we're back in Fanta Grande, I think I'll pay a visit to Vaults and tell them all about this little adventure.
Some time later, a brand new clinic was built in Folka. Apparently, the people of Tempul and Folka had chipped in to pay for it. A doctor really did move in from Seed Hollow, too. So Lev's parents were finally able to make more time for their son. I'm gonna be a great doctor one day. I'll work super hard so I can give you a real present. Just you wait and see. With an attitude like that, I have no doubt he'll make an amazing doctor. And besides, now he has my patented magic trick to put smiles on everyone's faces. When I peeked inside the clinic on one of our days off, I saw Lev chatting happily with the people of Folka. I'm sure this town will keep prospering even after we leave. The people here are tough. They'll overcome any hardship that comes their way. And that's what I believe anyway. After seeing the smile on Lev's face, how could I think otherwise? Have a good day! Just as we arrived at the cemetery, the clouds opened up, unleashing a torrent of rain. The blue sky was gone, painted over by a steely, unforgiving gray. Looking around, I saw that there were others paying their respects at different plots. Like Carzeda, they probably lost loved ones to the storm. As soon as he laid eyes on the mound of earth in front of him, the dam broke. Carzeda's shoulders heaved with his sobs. Why did I say those awful things? <laughs> there were so many more important things I wanted to tell you, but I... He sank to his knees, crippled with grief. His fist beat at the earth, sending drops of muddy water splashing onto his face. I didn't want that to be our last conversation. If I hadn't blown up, if we hadn't fought, I... I only wanted to see you smile, but I made you cry. 
All I could do was watch over Karzeda as he poured out the feelings he'd held back for so long. <sighs> Let it out, son. It's the only way to get through it. After the visit, we made our way to a tavern. We could hear the rain beating down on the establishment. It was still day, but the sky was dark as night. Garzeda ordered the stiffest drink they had and downed it in one gulp. My friend once showed me a flower and said that each one symbolizes something. At the time, I didn't get it and I had other things on my mind, so I never bothered looking it up. I... He shook his head saying that he'd wished he had treasured those small, everyday moments with her. Each word struck me like a blow, reminding me of my own failures. How am I supposed to live with this regret? It's like the storm outside, pounding on me until I give in and let it sweep me away. I mulled over his question for a while before opening my mouth. I'm not the right person to answer that. Only your friend knows. But how? She's... So I told Karzeda about my wife, and about the agony of losing her. All the things I'd hoped for, things we could do as a family, were no longer possible. The chasm of remorse threatened to swallow me whole. I couldn't imagine things getting better. Not then, not ever. But I was still alive. Unlike my wife, I still had a future. Didn't that obligate me to move forward, to find meaning in being left behind, and try to fulfill what she wanted for me? Didn't that apply to Karzeda? You want me to go with you, to find that flower, I mean? Maybe finding it would give him the answers he needed. Do you think we can find the flower? That sounds like a good idea. Karzeda spoke haltingly, as if remembering the times he shared with his beloved friend. She'd always loved flowers. Tempil was a land forged by its mines, and its climate wasn't suitable for flowers. But that wasn't going to stop her. As if that thread of memory had unspooled another, Karzeda said that his friend mentioned having a secret flower garden. But she hadn't told him the location, so he wasn't sure where to begin looking. Sometimes she'd head out to a forest near Folka. If the garden's anywhere, it's probably somewhere in there. It might be a long shot, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. I drained the last of my glass. We stepped out of the tavern. The rain had stopped. The air was humid, but the sun was a welcome sight after the rain. I squinted up at the brilliant blue sky. There, arcing over the forest, was a large rainbow. No. 
well. <laughs> Most excellent. I shall wield this with honor. Exceptional. We took our first steps into the forest. There's something about the woods after it rains. The air's so pure and refreshes the spirit. I had a good feeling we'd find that garden in no time. My optimism didn't last long. We spent hours searching every single likely spot, and a lot of unlikely ones, too. Yet the garden eluded us. If it was here, it was tucked away somewhere really obscure. While we searched for those flowers, I made sure to keep tabs on Karzeda as well. The sun might have come out, but his expression was still clouded. He looked like he was on the verge of breaking down. I figured I should say something to try and shore up his spirits. I told him that no matter how harsh things are now, or how bad some days will be, there's always meaning in getting up each day, even if it takes some time to find it. Sometimes a search will take you back the way you came. Sometimes it's a detour. But even that has meaning, because the answer could lie off the beaten path. The important thing is to take things one minute, one hour, one day at a time. Even regret, though it seems as tall and foreboding as a mountain, might become a gentle hill you could walk over, given enough time. I know what it sounds like. But I wasn't just telling him this to make myself feel better. It's just... Sometimes, you have to run when the going gets tough, and that's fine. Just as a ship needs a port in a storm, a soul needs a safe harbor. Turning your back on your problems isn't the solution. No one knows that better than me. But we're allowed to make mistakes. That's part of the journey, and what it means to be alive. At some point, we have to settle up with the demons inside of us and learn to live with them. I've been skyfaring long enough to trust my gut, and it says we'll find that garden. Thank you. If only I knew what she was growing. We'll know once we find it. Just stay close to us, okay? should ward off the beasts. Maybe it was put here to protect the flowers. There might be more nearby.
another scented stick. And more over there. This is the place. I know it. Someone's precious memories and get away with it. Look at the dust. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Appreciate you, Narvaya. I follow oh, only the shortest road to success. I'll cover Here's you. Some... <laughs> you win, sir. Oh, yeah. Let's even the playing field. <laughs> the time is right. Got him in Watch my the Stay focused. All right, Understood. lead the way. Have any danger. Here comes trouble. Oh, a little present for you. Oh, 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 here we go again. Oh, 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 who the hell then? Worry, Lead off. Right. How kind. What can I say? Yep, yeah, we got him good. Alright. Don't go crying home to mama. The Antica Kanona. Zeta, come on, pull yourself together. <sighs> People weren't the only ones who lost their homes to the storm. Monsters that were driven from their former territories flocked to the woods surrounding Folka. We finally found the garden. But the monsters had trampled a good chunk of the flowers, leaving behind only a few pathetically wilted survivors. Garzeda stared at the carnage, dumbstruck. <sighs> I couldn't blame him. It's not like the monsters had done it on purpose, but they might as well have stampeded over his broken heart. I'm no gardening expert, but even in their sorry state, I could tell that the flowers had been well cared for. Fertilizers, spades, watering cans, and other tools were laid out. Inside one of the equipment boxes, we found a notebook with detailed records of all the flowers she had planted. The notebook had instructions on how much fertilizer was needed to help the flowers take root in the mineral-loaded soil. The best time for planting, the names of the flowers, and what they symbolize. I passed the notebook to Carzeda 
who began reading it as if the secret to life was written in its pages. Maybe for him it was. The last page described another flower garden, separate from this one. With the notebook to guide us, we went in search of it. As we walked, I prayed for Karzeda's sake that the other garden was intact. Good day. We came to a quiet clearing in the forest, devoid of any beasts. The only other presence besides us was a crisp breeze. Shafts of sunlight peeked through the trees that shaded the garden. I felt my breath catch in my throat as I took in the sight. Purple anemones bloomed, filling the entire clearing. Just looking at them, I could feel the tension drain from my body. That's it. These are the flowers she talks about. Karzeda opened the notebook. Flipping through its pages, he came to the section on anemones. Tears spilled down his cheeks as he read her notes. I see. So that's what she was trying to tell me. After a while, he pulled himself together and turned to me. Thank you. For everything. I saw it through his tears, and heard it trembling on his voice, a fledgling seed of hope. If you hadn't come when you did, well, I never would have known what she wanted to tell me. He smiled, a pure expression devoid of the previous darkness. She dreamed of a tempio blooming with flowers, and I'll carry the torch. I'll make sure her dreams come true. Glad to hear it. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other and you'll be fine. Karzeda placed a hand over his heart and closed his eyes, as though speaking to his beloved. Or maybe he was burning the sight of this garden in his mind's eye. Our time together came to an end, but I felt as if the storm clouds were truly gone, and in its place was a clear blue sky. Maybe part of the reason I was drawn to Karzeda is that I could sense that we shared something important. We both had regrets weighing us down. We made our share of mistakes. Still, there's no turning back time. All we can do is keep marching forward. Now that I think about it, just as I was there for Karzeda, there were a lot of people propping me up on my journey. I owe all those people my thanks. It's because of them that I stand here today. Dear Organ, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done. Every now and then I hear news about you and your crew. I'm glad to hear you're doing well. I was finally able to get licensed as a full-fledged jeweler in Folka. I started creating pieces based on those purple anemones we saw. People love them. I can't make them fast enough to keep up with the demand. The proceeds from the sales go to organizations working to restore Tempeel to its former glory. Once we can go back home, I plan to create a large garden, just as she would have wanted. The promise we made as kids can't be fulfilled, but I plan to keep the promise I made to myself. I'll do it to bring her dream to life. P.S. I never did tell you what those purple anemones symbolize. According to her notebook, they mean, I believe in you. I'll wait for you. The next time you're in Folka, look me up. Until then, please take this pressed flower as a token of my gratitude.
During our stay in Seed Hollow, a certain request made its way into our hands. We were to inspect sightings of a mysterious young girl near the Seed Hollow Castle. You don't think she's a ghost, do you? I put a hand on Lyria's shoulder to comfort her, and asked the client for more details. According to reports, the young girl appeared to be looking for something. Workers helping with the castle's restoration effort would attempt to approach her, but she would vanish before they could get close. Each sighting would spook another handful of builders, until there weren't enough hands to complete repairs. By all accounts, it seemed to be a ghost. Of course, I couldn't admit that to Lyria. It was not uncommon for spirits to take refuge in ancient ruins or castles, and play tricks on any unfortunate souls passing by. They were almost never malicious, even friendly sometimes. However, we couldn't take our chances. I just wished we had more information to work with. There was something familiar about this story. I just couldn't quite put my finger on it. The bustling streets and alleyways of Seed Hollow were steeped in an unusual silence. Rumors of the phantom sightings had spread, and the citizens became too fearful to leave their homes. We were still missing a part of the picture, but what was it? I'm sure it was just someone's minds playing tricks on them. Poor Lyria. I needed to wrap up this investigation as quickly as possible. However, despite our comprehensive search of the castle, nothing stood out as unordinary. We'll have to come back another day, I... Just then, I noticed a faint movement in the corner of my eye. Wait, it couldn't be. Huh? What are these guys doing here? We already took care of Angra, mind you! Ominous form. Foul creatures born from the primal beast on Ramainu. Surely they weren't the cause of the sightings, were they? I had my doubts, but this was no time for questions. The castle was in dire need of some pruning. Such hostility. It seems we've no choice but to fight. You sure these are the ghosts? Goodbye now. <laughs> Did you miss me? You want more. Something about this place gives me the willies. We'll uncover the truth soon, so hang in there, okay? <laughs> this place will need more than a restoration if we don't do something about this. Fields of thorns and grapes. Can't keep up. <laughs> Full bloom! Come! Now that was Come great! Time for you to go! Spiral road! Looks like it's clear for now. Shall we? disappears if you attempt to get close, but perhaps that wasn't the entire truth. Very well. There now, thank you. Our job's not finished yet. Shall we?
They've infested the entire courtyard. Who's ready for a pruning? What do you think? Full bloom! Can't keep up? Come! Come join. Fighting up close won't do us good here. Sounds to me like it's time for a bank to battle. That's right up your alley, isn't it? I have the back line for you. You know? Teamwork is essential for victory. <laughs> there now. <laughs> Don't underestimate me. Quite a tenacious bunch, aren't they? Christianese, where are they coming from? No falling under my watch. Get them! Let us go. We'll never back down. Get them! Do it, Very we well. Keep my interest. Sullen Rose! There's still more of them? Get a clue already! <laughs> Shall we conclude? Come and get me. Did you miss me? Oh my God. That should be the last of them. Huh. And stay out! Wait a second. What is that? What's this? A crystal fragment. I took a closer look. Within its faded luster was a familiar green aura. But where had I seen it before? Hold up a second! Doesn't that remind you of those hallowed ground spots? Vern was right. Its glow was nearly identical to the crystals found on hallowed grounds. Their unique aura kept monsters at bay, providing travelers with safe haven. Did this shard come from one? It's faint, but Excavalian's aura. I can feel it coming from inside. That couldn't be. I focused on the crystal splinter in hand, and indeed, there was the presence of a familiar primal. Excavalian was the primal beast of Dolly Island, much farther than a stone's throw from here. So why were we able to feel its presence all the way in Seed Hollow? It's not the only one. I think I can feel another primal beast here too. Another primal? How could that be possible? A phantom girl, excavalian, ominous forms, and now another primal beast. None of it made any sense. As we unraveled more of the castle's secrets, it became clear that we had barely scratched the surface of its walls. Need something?
We were back at square one. In hopes of finding some new leads, we split up and interviewed every Seed Hollow local we could find. Despite our efforts, we found little new information. Zothba and his connections, on the other hand, proved invaluable once more as they unearthed a new clue. The girl wore a crown of flowers. I froze in place. I knew this primal. In fact, I learned of her on my first visit to Zega Grande. Konohana Sakria, was it? Yes. An ethereal girl bearing a floral crown? It had to be her. Her presence would explain why Lyria sensed a primal beast in addition to Excavalion. She was packed down to Ulmarine Island, and she held domain over blossoming flowers. The unusually vibrant bouquets blooming across Seed Hollow just added more proof of her proximity. With the culprit identified, only one problem remained. Me. After what Sakria and I went through, I doubt she would ever show herself around me again. Before I could share this revelation, there was something else I needed to discuss with the crew. Not about Konohana Sakuya, but my time spent with the captain's father. His crew was on a journey to collect Astrum fragments. These fragments were said to have fallen straight from the astral realm, and contained the power of the primal beasts themselves. Using the fragments, the captain's father could separate astral power embedded within primal beasts and return them to their original forms. That was the purpose of his journey. His was a mission of liberation, to free so-called deities and legends who were tethered to the Sky Realm. Once free from the shackles of their corporeal forms, they could fade back into the nebulous ideas and faiths that had given them structure in the first place. Of course, it would be up to the primal beasts themselves to make this decision. Some had grown quite fond of living in the Sky Realm. However, there were countless others who were born into the skies, cursed to fight for eternity. These were the ones who longed for a return to the immaterial. At the lowest point in my existence, when I felt I had no purpose in these skies, I'm sure I felt the same. Regardless, some were quick to brand us a ruthless crew of primal hunters. And surely Konohana Sakuya had heard the rumors. But the question remained, why had she decided to reveal herself to me now? Unfortunately, simply knowing the identity of the girl would not solve the problem of her many phantom appearances. So, is this, a uh, Kahuna Yakuza? You think she's the one causing the monsters to come out? Unlikely. I've never met her in person, but... I don't think she and the ominous forms are connected in the slightest. Yo! Got some new intel on the girl. You're still, uh, working the case, right? The family Zothba had been continuing to search for clues in the background, and thankfully, their search bore fruit. In one of the areas where the ghostly girl was sighted, a bystander had found an ancient book. Broke my brain trying to read the dumb thing, but you're smart and pretty, uh, pretty smart and, well, yeah. Oh, poor boy couldn't even get his words straight. Thank you. You're quite the gentleman. No, 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 I'm not. I'm, I'm a, I'm a badass. Uh, anyway, I should get going. He had barely placed the book in my hands before scurrying off. 
What had gotten into him, I wonder? I opened the book and peered through the rune-like characters inside. No normal person would be able to decipher this. Oh, that looks really complicated. Really? Let me see. When Vern approached the book, Roland's transceiver began to glow. It illuminated the text, somehow morphing the illegible script into something readable. My breath caught in my chest. Had an astral authored this book? The text seemed to be a log from an experiment of sorts. Although it was barely legible, I tried to grasp its meaning. Originally, it was Excavalian, primal beast of fortification, who forged a pact with Almarine Island. Although it's unclear why, Excavalian would eventually migrate to Dali, leaving Konohanasakuya to take its place on Almarine. That was all I could make out of the texts. With this new information, I needed to re-examine the facts. First, the stage. Almarine Island, home to Seed Hollow and its citizens, once protected by Excavalian. Next, a curious switch. Konohana Sakria takes its place as the island's pack-bound primal. Now, our present mysteries. A crystal shard replete with Excavalian's aura. On Grimainu's altar beneath the castle, the ominous forms. And finally, Konohana Sakuya's curious reappearance. Think, Rosetta. Was the shard left behind by Excavalian? Did it serve a purpose in protecting the island? It was possible that Avia's invasion of Seed Hollow destroyed this mechanism, causing the Primal to reveal herself in defense. Now that I think about it, the ghost rumor started to pop up only after that crystal beneath the castle was destroyed. So, it was all connected. There's no time to explain, but more ominous forms will appear if we don't repair this island's defense system. Where could we find another fortifying crystal? How about Dolly? That's where Excavalion lives now, right? Maybe it's got a fair lying around. Indeed. If we were to find a solution to our problems, it would be buried beneath those churning sands. If I'm not mistaken, we should come across a Guardian Crystal not too far from here. Let's take a look around those hills. Do you remember where we fought that griffin?
Oops. Didn't mean to wake you. Mind letting us pass through? Come, Crimson Thor! Hmm, not quite the crystal we're looking for. A wild monster's den. I'd like to avoid needless bloodshed if possible. I don't think we're in the right place. Let's try to hit up that hilly area. Gavalian. It's faint, but I can feel it. Did we find it? Ah, a cobra! It must have been waiting this time. What strike. do you think? It seems words won't work here. Get ready, everyone. Where else? I'll handle it. If you insist. On my honor. That went well. Rose. No matter what Come dangers lie ahead. Yeah. We'll be ready. Did you miss me? Don't underestimate me. Fall the block. Careful. Don't let it strike you with venom. Come join me. Come, Crimson. What do you think? Stay with me. Let's play. I shall follow your call. Don't let up yet. Understood. Understood. <laughs> you want more. Don't. Goodbye now. <laughs> now then, where were we? Oh, we did it! Let's take this crystal back to Seed Hollow. Shortly after securing a crystal from Dolly, we returned to Seed Hollow Castle. We installed the new crystal beneath the castle, causing a pale green light to illuminate the area. It was the familiar aura of hallowed ground, sure to repel any lingering ominous forms. It's too bad we couldn't meet her, Konohana Sakuya. The mystery had been solved on nearly all fronts, I'd be lying if I said I was completely satisfied, however. After all was said and done, I still didn't get the opportunity to clear the air with her. Hello.
Pace returned to Seed Hollow, and it was soon back to the usual hustle and bustle. I informed the frightened repairman of the girl's true identity, the primeval god of Seed Hollow. A primeval god? Holy macaroni! That's a spicy nugget of news. How do you manage to stay so charming and informed? Hmm? <laughs> a lady never reveals her secrets. It's a little sad that you couldn't meet Konohanasaku yet. I know you wanted to apologize to her. I knew somewhere deep down that talking with her wouldn't bring back all the journeys I had with the captain's father. However, seeing all the blooming flowers across the city, it almost felt as if she was acknowledging me anyway. I may well have imagined it, but... Call it something of a mutual understanding between distant sisters. After the vibrant patchwork of spring began to spread throughout Seed Hollow, I made a habit of taking a daily stroll around the city. On one of my walks, I had mindlessly put the crystal fragment in my dress. After arriving at a particularly sunny spot, I took it out to admire it. Something about it was different today. Instead of my usual reflection, if not only for a brief second, I saw a smile that wasn't my own. A girl in a flower crown. Our eyes met for a second before, pop, a single rose had materialized at my feet. When I looked back into the fragment, she was nowhere to be seen. Although I can't prove it, I know that she was here, listening to me. So I whispered, Beautiful. This city has blossomed under your care, all while blooming in your own right. You deserve to be here. Please come again. Here are the details. Be on your way. I'll give it my damnedest. In need of a guardian? Welcome. Which weapon shall I strike out an order for a new weapon? It's complete.
Leave it to me. Munitions, eh? Coming right up. Come again. Makes me want to do some target practice. Behold the fruits of my training. I think that butter's my biscuit. Now you it's so over. Let me out. So long as we support one another, no foe can stop us. And I've still Let's got some keep juice. It up, it? Did you expect any less? You got it! Excellent! Let's rock the next one, too! Oh, yeah! Got a beat up! Now then! What? Oh, there's my backup! Target into practice. the fray! Send them crawling back to their holes! Good winning! Sunders evil. 
Good job, team. You worked your butts off. I know this is Roll One's journal, but I'm sure he'd be all right with us reading it. A fine hello to you! Sending out the old crew signal, eh? Who should we vote? Hey! 
Love it. Which will it be? Here are the details. We're counting on you. Where are we going? Ease off with you and my back, and it's all worth it. Watch my back. Coming right out. 
so far. Well no. executed, everyone. <laughs> you two are cool. Let's finish this. Let's get ready for the next one. Let's see okay. what the I'll take the well Vanguard. Set. Now move out. Gotta beat up. Up enough. Follow close. Oh yeah. So long as we support one another, no foe can stop us. We need to gain the distance. Quick. Agreed. This crew. See? No. I can't do this. Thanks, Ty. Well. All is swept away. Over. 
Sparta Vega! Even the plane could be. Chinese one! Time of chaos! Now then! We're on a roll! the last of them, which means quest complete. Let's see. <laughs> hmm. Pretty good find. Whoa, impressive. Good job, team. You worked your butts off. I've got you covered. Let's do this! Ready for some action? for some action. Easy 
easier than eating apples. Welcome, folks. Yeah, it'll do. You find something shiny, yeah. you bring it to me first. Got it? Not bad. Complete! Sweet! Not bad! <laughs> on you. That's the stuff. the stuff. Over here! 
Should be the last of them, which means quest complete. <laughs> nice. Not bad. This looks rare. <laughs> <laughs> 